Hey everyone, it's Nancy at Speaking Painting Hamden. We're gonna paint this painting of a peacock feather and I'm going to change it up a little bit so it fits on a rectangular canvas. And the reason I'm doing that is we are also gonna be adding a flute to the front of it. And the reason for that is that the flute and the peacock feather are symbols to represent the um, that represent the Hindu god Krishna. And so we were asked by a, a group of folks in our community who are Indian if we would come up with a painting that would be appropriate for people to paint on a date. And so uh, we thought that the Hindu god Krishna, who's the god of divine love, uh, would be a great subject. But as you know, painting people or um, the images that represent a god, that's tough. That can be kind of tough in a little two hour painting or 90 minute painting, depending on the class. So the peacock feather is a symbol of that. And um, according to the story, um, uh, Krishna plays a flute and he plays it so beautifully that the peacocks actually give their feathers as a gift when they hear the, beaut the beautiful music. So today I'm using some yellow, red, blue, our primary color paints. And I'm also going to be using white and black. This is kind of the standard uh, colors that we use here for our YouTube video classes. And so I'm going to take that peacock feather painting and I'm going to change up the composition of it just a little for a rectangular painting. And then I'll put a, a flute in front of it. So let's see how that goes. Uh, I have my paint left over from the last class that I did. So I'm gonna freshen it up with a spritz of water. I'm also going to freshen my canvas with a spritz of water. The reason why we put water on our canvas, and you could do it with a sprayer bottle or with a brush, makes no difference. But we put a little bit of water on our canvas just so that the paint moves really smoothly across the canvas. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to put, uh, I have my water on the canvas, right? And I'm gonna mix up a little bit of pink. Uh, that's kind of a purpley pink. And I'm gonna put that on the top. I'm gonna to put some purple in the middle and some blue down here, just like that one. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up a big brush. I'm gonna to mix together a little bit of white and a little bit of red, and that's gonna give me pink. Now that color at the top is kind of a pinky purple. So I'm gonna add just the tiniest amount of blue, just a little bit of blue to that mix, because what I want is not really lavender, but kind of a pinky purple. So it's a little bit more red than blue. And if mine doesn't look exactly like that one, who cares, right? Actually, the color that I'm mixing looks like the middle color of that painting. So I think I'll start with that one first. All right, so I mixed together, that is lavender. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with that one first, why not? And I'm gonna put that across the center of the painting and I'm gonna put it in a band. And I'm just using a big brush and just kind of putting it in a slant. This is the background of my of my feather. So I'm gonna crisscross. I'm gonna paint some little strokes like that, keeping it wispy. I want a soft texture in the background. And I'm also gonna paint the tops and the sides and the bottom as I go. And the reason I do that is if you paint the tops and the sides and the bottom when you're painting, you will uh, have a gallery wrap. And what that means is that you don't have to put it in a frame for it to look finished and that will save you money. So woohoo, all about saving money, right? Who isn't? Okay. And it looks pretty modern that way too, I think. All right, so I have the center in this diagonal of lavender, pretty pretty, right? So then I'm going to, I can go up and mix in a little more pink. So I'll take a little more red, put that in there, a little more white. Now notice when I'm mixing, I don't take from the center of the pile of paint 
because why waste the paint, right? I don't need to mix huge amounts. I just need a little bit at a time. And that way I save the paint for the next, for something else that I'm gonna do. All right, so I'm mixing together a little more red with a little more white, adding that to that lavender. And hopefully what I'm gonna get is a pinky purple that's more red than lavender, more pink, more pink. All right, so I'm still mixing, still mixing. I'm using a big brush. You could use any size brush. It makes zero difference. But I do want to mix it so that I can really see the color that it is. All right. Almost there. All right, I'm thinking that's going to work. We'll see. It's a little dark. A little bit dark, I can add a little bit more white to it. But it doesn't really matter. No one's ever gonna see the original, so they're not gonna say, hey, your pink is not the same as that person's pink, or your purple is not the same as that person's purple. No one's ever gonna see, so they won't know. So um, that's the great part about painting. You can use an inspiration photo. You can change it all you want, and no one will ever see that inspiration, right? Even even I'm told Bob Ross even used inspiration photos when he painted. Sometimes they're the photos he took up in Alaska. That's what I heard. And so I'm just putting that little pink. That is quite a bit darker than the original. Anywhere you wanna add a little more white, go for it. And my pink or purple is not going to be the same color or the same shade as the original exactly. And I'll tell you why. Even if I put in the exact same amounts, um, there's, we have a whole bunch of different kinds of paint here. Um, we have what's called chromacryl. We have blit acrylic. Uh, we have different kinds of paint. We have about 50, well, not 50. We have probably 30 different colors or shades, I'm guessing, something like that. Um, and so even in the blues, we have a lot of different blues. We have a lot of different reds. And so when you're painting from an inspiration, you don't really know exactly what paintings they, what colors they used. You just try to approximate it. And that what, that's what makes it an inspiration and not an exact copy. And that's fine. That is fine. And a little texture in the background. If I add a little more white in some areas because I mixed it differently than the last batch, no worries. That adds texture. And texture is a good thing when you want a wispy painting. And for a feather, wispy is very good. Again, I'm painting on the sides to create that gallery wrap. And you don't have to be quite as fussy on the sides or the top or the bottom because hardly anyone's ever gonna look up there. I will remove this and paint that tippy top area when I'm done. But for now that's whole, making my canvas steady. Now it looks like there's more light up in here. And the way we paint light is by adding some white. So more white up in that corner. and then blend it so it, I don't really know where that starts and where it stops. All right, a little more white up here. All right, now my painting's not gonna look exactly like theirs and that's fine, that's fine. Yours won't look exactly like either one of them, that's fine. 
No one will ever see the original. All right, now down here, this is going to be light blue. So I'm gonna take my blue and my white and where they meet, I'm gonna scooch them together and mix them up. And then I'm gonna have a light blue. All right, so down here's my light blue. Is that blue exactly like the one in the painting? No. This is probably phthalo blue. That could be ultramarine. It could be primary. It could be cobalt. It could be cerulean. We have no idea. Does it matter? No. It's still a pretty light blue. That's all that matters. And I'm going to overlap it a bit with the purple. So it blends. This will be a nice background for our feather. colors, very pastel. Soft. And you want soft colors if you're painting a feather. I am going to put in some jewel tones in that feather that aren't necessarily soft, but for the background to be soft, it just says this whole uh, concept of a feather is soft. Notice how I'm just going over where those two colors meet and kind of blending them together so you don't really know where one starts and where one stops. That's the goal, that's the goal. You want them to just fade into each other, just softly. Fade, 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 okay? Nice. So this is a peacock feather, and we know that because it has this, what is called an eye. I don't know what the biology term for it is, but in layman's terms, it's an eye. And while that's drying, I'm going to give you a moment to catch up, and I'm going to go grab some fresh water. recommend going uh, back and standing back about 10 to 15 feet away from your painting and see it from a distance because that's the, the distance you're going to be seeing it from across the room and so then you can see if there's anything that you need to tweak or you want to change so I always recommend that I'm going to add a little bit more white up in here I'm just going to blend it in. Blendy, blendy, blendy. And when I'm blending, notice how I'm doing these figure eights. That just helps me blend.
I don't even have any more paint on my brush. I'm just blending with the dry brush at this point. Just kind of moving around anything that might be a little bit wet, just smoothing it out a bit. But it's pretty dry. All right, so I think we have a nice background for a feather. Hope you agree. Okay. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a small brush, a pointy brush. There's gonna be a lot of this. That's what's so cool. And I'm going to make a long line starting from this corner up to about two thirds of the way up the painting and then to the right. So from here, curved a little bit and somewhere around there. That'll work. I could have made it straighter. I could have. I could have make it a little bit straighter. This first line isn't gonna show up too much because there's gonna be so many uh, fuzzies. I don't really know what those words are to describe the many lines in the painting. These, but I'm gonna call them fuzzies, okay? And so we're gonna make different colors of fuzzies that come out. And then up here, what we're gonna do is we're going to, um, we're gonna make an eye basically. And so I can go ahead and sketch it on. I'm gonna see my pinky finger. I'm gonna to touch it to a dark, dry place in the canvas. And I would recommend actually doing this part with white paint. Forget this line here, right? See that one, forget it. But I'm gonna do this part with white paint just so that I can sketch it. If I don't like it, I can always just cross it out. But I'm gonna sketch on the shape of an eye. And that if you mess it up like I just did just go over it again because it's in white it won't hurt anything at all and this ends in a long point and that's where the tip of that feather is going to go okay so that's just so you know where things are going to be and I can circle in the big eye in the eye the big it's almost like can you see the eye it's like a human eye almost or a fish eye even um, and then inside of that one is another dot. Now, I looked at uh, peacock feathers online. And the thing is, is that sometimes the center dot is different shapes. Sometimes the shape is like a half, a, like a hemisphere, like a half a circle. So on some species, no, some, yeah. Species of peacocks, it's like that. And on some, it's a full circle. So do it however you want. Do it however you want. And there's even one where it has a full circle, but then like a little cut into it, like at the bottom, like a Pac-Man. So however you wanna do it is fine. You do it your way, okay? I'm going to just make that a full circle because it's easier, okay? All right, so this is the general shape of our feather. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just take turns with my colors and I'm gonna let all my colors just mix and have a good time. So I'm gonna start with some blue. And again, this is with a small brush, a small round brush. And it's round because when I put my finger on the ferrule here, it's smooth and round all the way as I twist it. It never crimps. And I'm gonna start from this feather and I'm gonna go out. And I'm gonna go out kind of curving, see that? And I'm gonna go out more from the feather and curve. And each time I'm, oops, each time I'm gonna start in the stem and then I'm gonna curve out. See that, start in the stem, curve out. And just curve, you don't want any straight lines in this. These are delicate curves. It's kind of like a backward S, just super delicate. And they're gonna overlap with each other and they're not all gonna line up straight and perfect and that's fine. Because maybe there's a little wind in your painting. Just have fun with it and keep it curvy. Just keep them curvy. So I'm gonna do a bunch of blues.
you're going to get a little um, little bit shorter as well. Actually, I was going to say a little bit shorter, but no, they have to go around this eye. So they're not going to be shorter. In fact, they're going to come up almost like a hug around that eye. See that starting in the stem, whatever that's called, and going up. And then they're it's almost like they're waving their arms and giving a little hug to that eye. And then I'm even going to have some that I don't know where they start, but they're going to make this shape and just give a little hug to the end of that eye. And then they're going to come up in a point. See that point? Okay. I'll paint the inside of this later. No worries, it's all good. So anywhere you need another one, just go ahead. But make sure you have enough paint on your brush, you load your brush every single time. And if your paint is feeling thick like peanut butter, pick up a, a um, drip of water on your brush. I'm gonna spritz my paint again because it's feeling a little thick. You want to have it like Hershey syrup when you're doing this. When you're using a tiny brush like ink, you want to have that paint thin so it doesn't run out as you're swooping up. See how sometimes it kind of ran out. So now that's nice. I made it thinner and now it's moving like ink. That's what I wanted. That's so much better. See how that's better? All right. In general, the shape is like a backwards S. In general. But it's loose. All right, now I'm going to make a, li a little, remember that little pile of light blue? I'm going to go ahead and use that. And I'm going to put in some light blue ones. Why not? It's already mixed for me. Might as well. I'm going to put in some light blue ones. I forgot that is a light blue background, so I'm not going to put too many of these in there. They won't show up, but when it gets to the purple, they will. I have to remember not to go too fast. I have to remember to keep them curvy, keep them curvy. And then up here, of course, they have to encircle the eye. And some of them are gonna start up here, halfway up, and then go around the eye. Because you want all those colors in there. So far, so good. All right. Again, we're gonna paint this later in the eye. Okay, so next thing I'm going to move around and remember that pink? Let's use that pink. If you don't have any left, mix some more pink. And we're just going to move around our plate. So starting down here, swoop, swoop. starting in the stem, pulling out. Starting in the stem, pulling out. And you're probably wondering, huh, my pink is mixing with my blue. Awesome. That's not a problem. That's a good thing. Because then you're getting all these different colors without a, even trying. Now, this might not be perfectly realistic. I don't know if peacock feathers have so many colors. I don't know. And you know what? That's why it's called impressionistic and not realistic art. Oops, that one had a lot of white on it. I have to make a sound. Remember, hug that eye, hug that eye. Nice. 
nice. And I'm gonna keep moving around my plate and I'll see where the red is. I'm gonna pick up some red. If you don't like a color, don't put so much or skip it all together. You decide, you're painting, you decide. These are almost like arms, just embracing what's ahead of it. And then the next one around my plate, I'm gonna mix these two together. I'm gonna to make an orange. So just equal parts, yellow and red should give you an orange. You might need more yellow. Just depends on the kind of paint you're using. All right, so I've got some orange in there. Try to go in the spots where you don't have other paint though when you're working with oranges and blues because they will mix together and make a brown. And so if you want them to be distinct, try to avoid putting orange on top of blue or vice versa. But if it makes a little brown, not the end of the world, right? But just try to, if you wanna keep your orange looking like an orange, then um, try to, not overlap blue too much, okay? Now, if you're a purist, you might say, oh, I wanna to stick to just dual colors. That's fine. You do you. All right, so then I'm gonna clean my brush. Now I'm gonna to go to the yellow. And I'm gonna try to go, you know, where, where there's room. Where I think the yellow will show up. And I'm concerned that this doesn't look like a perfect feather. No, I'm not concerned about that. I'm having fun. And then I, I noticed that if I come in from the top like that, that's easy. All right. Now I'm going to add a few. Um, let, let me clean my brush. I don't have any green. I need some green. So I'm going to mix some blue and some yellow. Now I'm keeping all of my colors separate. I'm not using all the yellow. I'm not using all the blue because I want, I, remember I need to come back in and paint that eye and I need fresh colors for that. So don't use all your paint when you're mixing. All right, so yellow plus blue equals green. And now, I think in a real peacock feather, I think there's quite a bit of green. Up until now, I haven't been concerned about what real peacock feathers have, but the green really says peacock feather.
So just make sure there's plenty of green, okay? Now I'm also going to pick up some, um, oh, not a lot, I'm going to pick up a little bit of black. And I'm not going to overdo it with the black. Put in a few. Kind of breaks up the colors. You need dark to see the light, right? Gives a little contrast, but don't overdo it. You don't want it to be a really dark. You just want it to provide some definition and some contrast. But it will really show up a lot, so just go easy, okay? All right, a little more. Okay, cool. I'm gonna let this dry a bit and I'm gonna go over it with some white. But I'm gonna go ahead and start the eye. So the eye, see how that, it's like a teardrop shape there. And then here is gonna be blue. So I'm gonna go in with some of my straight on blue. And in this area here, I'm gonna put a blue triangle. If that were a human eye, it's kind of that part on the inside corner. And I'm doing it just because I'm just copying that. That's all. And then this here is a lighter shade of blue. So I'm going to go back into my light blue, add a little bit more blue, maybe. And then in this circle, it's going to be blue. It's a lighter blue. See that? It's a lighter blue. I'll go ahead and fill it in. I'm going to go back in later with something dark. So but for now, I'll just go ahead and fill it in later. Nice. I noticed that way up here, they defined the top of that eye with some very dark blue. So I'm gonna use some dark blue to define in here. That dark blue, dark greens, like jade, those are jewel tones and they really stick out nicely. So jewel tones are really beautiful to put in a peacock feather. You want jewel tones. And what I mean by that are these straight on dark blue. All right. I'm gonna clean my brush again. Now here's the thing, when you go to put your orange in, you have to be 100% sure that your blue is dry. And I'll tell you why, blue plus orange make brown. And I just don't want it to be all brown. So I'm gonna actually put a little white in here where I messed up. And I'm gonna let that dry a bit because I don't want, I don't want it to be brown, I want it to be orange. And uh, the reason I want it to be orange is that orange and blue are complementary colors. Now when you mix orange and when you mix complementary colors together, you get brown. But when you don't mix them and they're right next to each other, one makes the other one pop, look brighter, look more stunning. So I wanna make sure that my orange, what I put in there, really pops. So I'm gonna let that dry a bit. So uh, this whole thing has to dry. Remember, I'm gonna put some more white in too because it's already looking way too dark for my taste. And dark to me means heavier and I want it to be lighter. So I'm gonna go in, I clean my brush really well. Make sure you clean your brush really well. And then I'm gonna go in and with a light touch, and I'm gonna clean my brush every time with a light touch, I'm gonna to put in some white ones. But my painting is still wet, so I might need to wait a few minutes actually. Um, yeah, I can do that, I can wait a few minutes. So let's just hold off. 
Let's just wait a few minutes, let that dry a few minutes. And then I'm gonna, I wanna add white to it so that the whole thing doesn't look so dark. Now, in the meantime, if you have that orange and whenever your inside that eye is dry and the blue is dry enough that it's you know pretty dry, you can go in and put that orange in. Notice how I'm touching any dry spot with my pinky so I can be really careful. And I can put that orange in. Now that orange is not showing up really well on top of the pink, you see that? So what I can do is I can mix a little bit of white in with my orange and that's gonna give it a little more stick to it a little more oomph so that it shows up. It brightens the orange, but it also, white has more pigment in it. It kind of has more stick to it kind of like the difference between scotch tape and duct tape. Uh, it just is stronger. So I added a little bit of white and now when I come in here, it's gonna show up more, see that? But I have to be real careful. I don't wanna to touch any wet blue. That would be a big mistake. I want this to show up. I want it to be bright. I need to stay away from the blue because orange and blue make brown. And there's nothing wrong with brown. Brown is great where you want it. It's just not great when you want something to really pop. So I'm going to go very slow, very careful. because I want that eye to be the focal point of the painting. That's, that's what's gonna pop. So up here, I'm gonna be very careful. Use your smallest brush, go slow, go careful. Don't let all the colors mix in the eye. They mix down here, not the end of the world. But in the eye, you want that to be, you want it to be fresh, you want it to be, really bright. So if you're going back and forth between colors, be careful. And make sure you knock the excess water off your paint because I just realized, oh, this is thin. This is kind of dangerous. If I had a drip, I'd be sorry. So just make sure that you clean, when you clean your brush, knock any drips off before you go into something you're trying to be careful about. All right. I'm liking how that's looking. You see how it's popping? I'm going to let that dry a few more minutes. See that one up there, that one was where I touched my pinky. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to fix that, go right through it. Oh, didn't work. Thought green would cover that up, maybe. All right. Now on that painting, there is a black dot I'm going to maybe put a black dot, but I'm going to try green and just see how it looks. I don't know. I'm just going to try it and see because I like jewel tones. Really like jewel tones in this eye. Hmm, not dark enough. Maybe if I add a little black to my green. Let's see what I can get. I might need to just put in black. We'll see. Mixing some black into my green. I'll just try it. If I don't like it, I'll go right in black. Yeah, I think it's going to have to be back. Because we really want it to pop, right? All right. Now I'm looking at my feather and a couple things. One, I'm going to come back through and make a straight line through. This one doesn't have it. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go ahead and put it in here. So basically, if you come from this eye, you can come down and just 
connect it with a straight line. And that just puts that rib down the center of the painting again, down the center of the feather. I'm gonna do that here, but I wanna make sure that that paint's dry before I do it. Cause you know what I mean? On a feather, it has that, that kind of like, it looks like hard plastic stick, but it's really like cartilage or something. It's just that rib goes through. And then, all right. So when this is dry in here, I'll do the same thing. But for now, I'm gonna look and see, I'm letting this dry. Remember, I'm gonna put a black dot in there when it's dry. But I'm looking at what's already dry. And I'm going to go ahead and put in some white where I can, that's dry enough to put in white to add some more light back into this painting. But I'm really being careful because I want it to be where it needs light and where it's dry. I don't want to keep smudging things and make it eventually, if you keep swirling everything, uh, smudging everything together, eventually you're just going to have brown. And in a painting of a feather, the whole idea is to have color, right? And if I'm doing it correctly, this should really brighten it up a bit. And it also, like the black, it also defines, adds definition. I like to start in the stem and I'll tell you why, rather than out in the sky and coming in toward the stem, because when you, anytime you put down your brush onto the canvas, you deposit more paint where you start. Right, that makes sense. And so if I come out from the stem, anytime I'm painting a feather or a tree trunk and branches, I'm gonna get those finer points at the end. If I start inside the spine of the feather, or whatever that's called, spine or stem or whatever it's called. And then if I pull out, I get sharper, more delicate points at the end. I might have overdone this, but that's okay. It's been fun. Oh my goodness, this is fun. And I want to make sure that this feather eye gets all the attention. It's just got a lot of definition and it's literally bigger. And it's hugged by the other fuzzies. And it really draws your eye up into that feather, that eye. That's where I want the attention in the eye. All right, I want to stop myself before I get too carried away because this is so fun. All right, I'm going to let all of this dry. And this painting is going to actually have a flute laying across it around here. And the flute, the purpose of the flute is that it um, is in that story that I told you. Uh, so make sure before you completely stop, make sure that you do have enough green in your painting, in your, uh, yeah, because green is a, like a jade or an emerald is a really common color in peacock fe uh, feathers. So you want to make sure that Look at your painting before you stop. Just make sure it has enough green that your eyes see the green. It, the eyes need to see the green so it says peacock, okay? Other colors, doesn't really matter. But the green, important, okay? Green and blue, those are really important. All right, so, um, this is dry enough. I think I could come back in 
with a black dot. And I'm going to go slow and careful. And I'm just going to start with a dot in the center. Anytime you want to make a circle, start in the with a dot in the center and then build it out slowly, slowly circling around. And your arm or your hand will have muscle memory from the last go around and it will allow you to make a better circle than if you were just starting to draw a circle. Because not, very few people can just draw a circle, that's hard. But if you start with a dot and circle slowly out, you'll get a pretty impressive circle. Now I could stop there and just leave the black in the center and leave it just like it is. That's kind of cool actually. I might just keep that. A little green around it. Just making sure there's enough green. So that it says jewel tones. Nice. I always recommend going back and looking at your painting from about two to three feet away so that you can really see what you've got. Now, um, this is still a little bit wet, a little bit wet. I should leave it alone. I don't want it to be too big. Okay, uh, but remember what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go from this point here and I'm gonna pull through with white so that it emphasizes that all of these colors come from a point. So I'm just gonna go slow. And if the white turns into other colors, that's okay. Cause you know what? This feather spine or stem might actually be gray. I don't know. Just make sure it has a line going through the center. Probably gonna let that dry and go through it one more time with bright white. And then I'm gonna to start to think about how do I wanna do my flute? One thing I'm gonna do just for fun, I'm gonna come around here and I'm gonna carefully find a place where I can put my pinky. Hold on. Find a place where I can put my pinky where it's dry. Oops. And I'm gonna go around this blue eye here, this blue circle, because I want even more definition. So I took the dark blue and I'm circling it around the light blue because I want lots of contrast there and definition. However, you can get more definition in that eye is fine, just make sure whatever you're doing is dry. So it doesn't mix. Okay, that even adds a little more definition. You see that? You want that eye to just pop. Okay. So now I'm gonna think about my flute. I have to let this dry before I put on a flute. There's just no two ways about it. At least a little. I can come through with a flat brush. I was using my small brush the whole time, but if I have a flat brush and I just dip the very tiny tip in it, I can use that like a small brush. See that? Using the skinny side of my flat brush. And the only advantage to that over um, the small brush is it holds a little bit more paint. 
Don't make this spine too thick. Okay, good. All right, now, if you, uh, I would highly recommend using a ruler to make your uh, flute. So I'm gonna grab a ruler. Now my paints, oh my gosh, they're so wet, right? So whatever I do, I'm gonna have to be super careful. But look at that. My ruler is just about the perfect size for a flute. You see that? So what I could do if I wanted is I could use my small brush and some white paint. White's always a good, good, good way to do it. And think about where I wanna put this. And I could hold my ruler, set it down, I committed, see that, I committed. I can hold my ruler and I can draw a line across my ruler. I am being very careful to not let this ruler slide and slip because I don't want to, I don't want any unhappy accidents, only happy accidents allowed. But I have a nice solid line there. See that? All right, now here's the thing about, um, about paint colors. If I use the middle of my uh, palette here, where I've had a color before, but it's long dried, I'm gonna pick up blue. I'm gonna pick up yellow. And I'm gonna pick up red. Remember I told you before that blue and orange together make brown? Basically it's any, um, any uh, colors that complement each other make brown because brown is made by mixing yellow plus red plus blue. Yellow plus red plus blue. So if you mix yellow and red, you get orange, right? So orange and blue. If you mix green and yellow, oh, sorry, blue and yellow, you get green, so blue plus orange. So basically those three colors, red, yellow, and blue. Red, yellow, plus blue make brown. Red plus yellow plus blue. So that's brown, but it's a little dark. I wanted this to look like a bamboo kind of flute. So I'm gonna mix in a little white to make my brown a little lighter. See that? Now, if you want your brown to look a little more pine colored, you can add a little more yellow. If you want it to, you know, whatever, you decide. Let's pick up a little more yellow. I'm not exactly kind of sure what kind of wood it will be, but I just want it to be a lighter shade of brown. If I were to add just blue, it would make it blacker. So I don't want to do that. All right. Let's see. I'm playing. I'm just playing. Pulling until I get a brown that I really like. And that's a personal preference. Still just plan. It's a very warm brown. I just put on a bunch of red and I got a very warm brown. Yeah, try it. What the heck? All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use that line and then I'm going to come down just below it. Just come down about a half an inch just below it and try to keep it straight. But that top line is the ruler line. And so I'm gonna come below it to make that line a little thicker. And all these colors 
under my brush or just mixing in with that flute color, no problem. No problem. So thinking to myself, okay, how big is a flute compared to a feather? Flutes are pretty big. So I might need to make this bigger. I'll just have to wait and see. But you get the idea, you make one line and then you come underneath it and then just try to make it straight. That initial line will make your flute straighter. And the white from the initial line will mix in and it'll make it a lighter color, which in my case was a good idea. Okay, see that? There's my flute. <clears throat> now I'm gonna add a little bit of white into some of that brown because I want the top of the flute to have a little highlight on it. Like the sun, we know the sun is up here, right? And so the flute should have a slightly lighter shade of brown right at the top because our sun is on top. And of course, anything that's underneath the sun is gonna have a little light. And you paint light by just adding a little bit of white at the top where the sun would hit the, the object. So it's darker on the bottom and lighter on the top. You don't have to do that. It's kind of a more advanced thing, but it, it makes a difference, I really think. And then the darker brown, the one we did first at the bottom. And in fact, you could even add a drop of black just to make the bottom of the flute a little darker. Now, if you, like me, don't have a steady hand and you just made a little knot in your, you know, on your flute, just that's great because maybe this is a wooden flute and it has knots. It doesn't have to be metal. In the US, we have a lot of metal flutes, but maybe, maybe this is a more rustic one, a more natural wooden one. That would make sense. So see this darker area at the bottom? It's just I mix a little bit of black in. And that just makes my flute look a little more three-dimensional. They have it lighter at the top and darker at the bottom. Now I'm gonna let that dry a minute or two. And then I'm going to put finger holes. And so on a flute, you have one near one end, you have a place for the mouth. And basically you just paint that on by just painting, it's like a bowl and the top of the bowl is the top of the flute, see that? That's where that hole, you only see half of the hole, right? Cause it's right at the top. That's where the person who plays the flute puts their mouth. And then down on this end, I don't really know, I'm gonna to have to look it up. How many it would make sense if it's four, right? Or three, I don't know. But we're gonna put some of these. I'll have to look it up. Jared, do you play the flute? Do you know how many uh, finger holes are on the end of a flute? Okay, just wondered if you knew off the top of my head. Your head, I'm gonna to have to go look mine up. Can you look it up for me? Awesome, thanks. All right. So these are the finger holes at the end. Maybe there's one per finger. I don't know, maybe there's one per note. I don't play the flute, so I don't know. But I know that they go down on this end because when you hold the flute and you put your mouth on this side, that's where the um, hole is. What's that? Six. Six? Okay, thanks. All right, so one, two, three, we better get busy, huh? I'll put another one down, way down here. Oh, six total. So does that include the mouth? You know? It probably doesn't really matter too much.
I think it's five and one, that's my guess. Obviously these are not equidistant, they're not perfectly spaced, but who cares? I can put a little bit of white through the center just to show kind of the, and a little more roundness to this because what's close to me is gonna look slightly, well, actually, um, when things are light, when you highlight things, they tend to stick out more. So if I want this side of the flute to stick out more, just put a little white line through it and then it makes it look a little more circular. It's just light hitting the this side of the foot. I have to be careful not mess up those finger holes. So there's my flute. Now well, that might be too, too. I don't know. Seems to me like ostrich feathers would be huge, don't you think? So you can define this flute all you want. If you wanna outline it in black, you can do that. But again, I always recommend wait until things are dry enough um, so that you don't mess them up. I'm taking some risks here by not waiting. You don't have to make the same risks I am. I just wanna get it done. There's no way I could have done this without that ruler to start with because there's no way I can make a straight line without one to go on top of. And that's where the ruler was really, really handy. So even if you already did it, I would use a ruler and straighten it out. You can always paint over it and make it a little bigger. The ruler will make all the difference for you. All right, so that's got some contrast to it, so you can see it, right? Um, has a black line underneath and on the end, and then a white line through the middle, and the light, the light brown is at the top. And if you want to outline the top just to show a little more contrast, you can. Just be careful. But you don't have to. You don't have to. I think if the, if the line is at the bottom, that is pretty much contrast enough. Probably being a little more fussy than I need to be. All right, so most people who see this, if they aren't familiar with the um, uh, specifics about Krishna, they're not gonna have any idea what this is. They're going to go, why is there a flute on top of a feather? But if you are familiar with um, the Hindu culture and the idea of um, Krishna and his flute, then you will know, and the um, peacocks, then uh, that person would know exactly what this is. All right, so this is it for me. I'm going to probably just make one more pass through on this spine just to make that, now that that's dry a little bit, I want that to really pop. So you can see the center of that feather and you'll know that's where all of those fuzzies on the feather came out of. All right, so that is it for me. This painting is called Feather and Flute. Now, if you want it, you can even put some little music notes coming out of the flute. Why not? You could do that. Your painting, your world, your call, you decide. Uh, Gonna tweak, stand back before you sign it and you call it a date, stand back, look at it from across the room. That's always a good idea when you paint. Look at it from across the room or hold it up to a mirror from where you are. Just be able to see it from farther away. I can see mine in my camera. 
And then I'm going to, with a small brush, I'm gonna just put my initials in the bottom corner. And there we have feather and flute. And maybe I'll put a little music note. Oh, wrong way. It's been a long time since I was in uh, school. I, I don't play an instrument, so I kind of forget. So I'll just cross that one out and I'll, when it's dry, I'll just do another one. I meant to do a treble clap. That's what I meant to do. Anyway, if you know your music notes, go for it. There we go. That's it. All right, if you know your music notes, go for it. If not, you don't have to put music notes. That's just kind of a fun thing to do. And uh, voila, thanks so much for painting with me today. I really appreciate your um, you finding out about us and painting with me. And I hope that you will continue painting because every time you paint, you become a better artist. Cheers. I like that definition there, that made that pop. Join us again on YouTube or if you're in the Denver area, please join us. Come on in for a live class after we reopen after the pandemic. We're at I-25 in Hamden. We have classes every single day of the year except for Thanksgiving. Um, when it's not pandemic time, we have uh, acrylic. This is acrylic. We have oils. Uh, we teach Bob Ross oils. Uh, again, when it's not pandemic time. And we teach watercolor and uh, pour painting. So we'll, we'll uh, have a wide variety. Check out our website, www.sipping, then the letter N, painting, Hamden, H-A-M-P-D-E-N, like the street, dot com. Take care. Bye-bye.